Hello everybody and welcome back Airbus uh, and what's it doing now and uh, Happy New Year to everybody as we start looking forward to 2021. Let's hope it's a, a better year than 2020. Um, so as I said in my uh, previous video in the introduction there's a bit of a heads up to uh, bleed and pneumatics. Um, we're going to start take a look at that now uh, in depth. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward subject this one really um something that we take for granted um our only interaction really with it usually is turning the apu bleed on when we're starting engines uh sometimes we might see the odd ecam where the hp valve doesn't close properly because they sometimes get stuck um that usually is about it. Sometimes we might have to open the cross feed, uh, but generally speaking, or cross bleed, I should say, but generally speaking, we, we don't have an awful lot to, to do with it. So it's probably a good idea to review it because if we did have to deal with it in abnormal uh, conditions, um, then having a working knowledge of what the system does, how the plumbing works, how we interact with it, uh, and, um, and what we need to do in abnormal conditions and what that really means for us, I think will probably be a good idea going forward. So um, what I'd like to do in the videos is first of all, have a look at a system overview. We'll have a look at um, where we get the bleed from or our, our bleed sources. Um, we'll have a look at what the bleed sources uh, provide provides bleed for. Uh, you'd be surprised with a couple of those um, requirements actually. Uh, re surprise me when you back over some of the, the content. Uh, we'll also have a look at the, some of the system uh, components as well. Then system operation will be the next thing we look at. We'll have a look at how we select the various bleed sources. We'll have a look at the normal operation and we'll have a look at abnormal operation as well, some of the ECAM perhaps, um, and uh, what happens when uh, this parts or the system uh, fails and what that really means for us. So um, I'm going to rub all this off the board and then we're going to get going uh, with system overview. OK, stay tuned. OK, um, first of all, apologies about the lighting here. I'm, I'm, I'm right handed, so I need to be on this side of the board when I'm writing. So I've had to move the light from here uh, to over here. I, I'm still playing around with this to try and make the lighting for you a little bit better. So I apologise if this is dark. If it's rubbish, then I'll just do it again. Um, but if it's passable and you can see what I'm doing, then uh, then we'll continue with it. OK, so let's have a look at the, uh, the bleed itself then, shall we? And the sources that... Uh, uh, the sources that it provides and I, I, I just put this in a sort of a block diagram uh, to sort of uh, help better understand it and give you sort of a, a, a pictorial uh, a pictorial view of it what I will do um, either on the side of the picture here or, or after I've drawn this is I'll bring up the schematic for you that's just straight out of the FCOM but I like to draw things because I'm a bit puff in book with pictures. I think that's how to remember things a little bit better. And you might be able to draw it yourself like this to help uh, consolidate your knowledge on it. But uh, however you prefer to, 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 to learn it. But essentially, um, we use the bleed for the air conditioning. Uh, we need it for engine starts. Um, the bleed will also be for our wing anti-icing. Uh, engine anti-icing is different because it's taken upstream of the bleed, so you, you don't need the bleed selection to make that work. Uh, so wing anti-icing. Uh, this was an interesting one I didn't realise. Uh, water pressure. Kind of makes sense really, doesn't it? You know, you go and make yourself a cup of tea and it goes... It pours out of the uh, the faucet there, and obviously at the taps in the in the in the, in the, in the toilets, we need to pressurise the water in order to get that um, uh, supply going. Um, hydraulic. I really hope you can see this. Uh, hydraulic uh, pressure. We don't want to have to do it again. Um, hydraulic pressure. What do I mean by that? Well, the hydraulic reservoirs need to be pressurised because what we don't want is any air to get into the system. Uh, hydraulic fluid obviously is uncom 
yeah, uncompressible, incompressible. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of a notification on here. <laughs> Uh, is incompressible, air is compressible. So we want hydraulic pressure of 3000 PSI to deliver all to our hydraulic systems. The last thing we want is any air in there. Uh, so by pressurizing the um, hydraulic reservoirs, then we re reduce the chances of any camp, camp, pump cavitation, camp, pump cavitation, uh, which will get air into the system, obviously. And one other thing on the side here is a fuel uh, pressurization or fuel inert. A fuel inert system. I'll cover this more when we look at uh, uh, fuel in itself, and it's a completely separate subject. Um, you have to be careful when doing these videos because one subject leads on to another, leads on to another, leads on to another. And honestly, you, I could be stood here for six days, um, starting off with uh, starting off with bleed and ending up in, in flight controls. I mean, like, seriously, they're also connected. Um, so, if you don't mind, I'll talk about that in more detail when we look at fuel systems. But essentially, all that's doing is it's taking oxygen out of the centre tanks because that's the most uh, flammable and vulnerable fuel tank on the aircraft. So, this system basically takes oxygen out of it to, uh, so that it reduces the fire risk. So, anyway, more, more about that um, another. Whoop another time. Uh, right, excuse me as I dive over here to some pens, because these are my new pens now. Got some for Christmas, you know. Uh, okay, so uh, what have we got then? How is the bleed controlled? Well, it's controlled by two BMCs. BMC1, BMC2. Okay, and they talk to each other. <clears throat> And in the middle of the BMCs is also a, uh, uh, we'll talk about the cross bleed, which I'll go on to uh, in uh, in just a second. I'm just trying to keep the old etch -a sketch going here and drawing at the same time. Sometimes uh, it can uh, it can be a little bit difficult. Uh, but the BMCs, uh, they look at um, um, the temperature of the bleed. They look at the pressure of the bleed. Uh, they'll also look at um, um, bleed source. And what, what I mean by that is um, whether it's HP or LPA uh, that it needs. And that's all managed by the BMCs. I've got one other thing here. Uh, yeah, okay, so whether it's um, compressor stage, HP or LP, that's, that's the only thing I was going to say there. So the, the bleed management computers, of which there are two of them, A and B, uh, will look at temperature, pressure, and they'll also look at uh, where, which stage of the compressor that the bleed is going to come from, whether it's uh, uh, IP, it's not LP, it's IP and HP. Um, and that will depend on demand at the time. So. In most cases, a normal operation, I hope you can see that still, in normal operation, the uh, BMCs will prefer to take IP air, intermediate pressure, um, simply because that's more fuel efficient. And when they'll only open up the HP bleed, because uh, it uses more fuel, uh, if the system demands it. So sometimes you might see, might see that, for example, both packs are running and your top of descent in idle there's not enough uh, bleed pressure sometimes, depending on atmospheric conditions and this, that and the other, and pack temperatures and pack flow and what have you. Um, that's all covered in another subject. But if you're in idle thrust uh, in the descent, both packs are on, there's a high demand. It's like the likelihood is that the IP might not be able to um, supply uh, the demand. Uh, and so the BMCs will open up the HP valve and uh, will, will assist with that. In fact, next time you're in the aircraft, uh, whenever that might be, um, have a look at the, uh, the bleed page in the descent, you'll, and you'll see the lines all um, all uh, all connecting up, which is uh, which is quite cool. Um, good. Oh, and one other thing that the BMCs will look for is leak detection. Okay, so. On and around the aircraft uh, where all this ducting takes place, 
uh, and where it's all uh, channeled around the uh, ring, uh, around the wing and through the APU ducting and through the pressurization, etc. Um, and where it then connects up to the, um, from the, from the bleed sources, where it connects up then to the services, there's all this ducting and there are points around the ducting where you've got these um, bleed temperature sensors, uh, BTS, um, and they will feed back, back to the BMC. So if there is a, a leak there detected, there's an over temperature in, the, in that part of the ducting or in, in, that, in that area, then that message will be sent to the uh, bleed management computers to turn off the bleed supply. So quite clever, really. Um, so what else can I tell you about the BMCs? Fully autonomous, they, can, they run together. Uh, BMC1 will look at loop A and BMC2 will look at um, loop B. It's a two loop system, a bit like Firewire uh, in the uh, fire control system on the aircraft. Uh, so it usually requires, well, it will require under normal circumstances, loop A and loop B detection to detect a fault to actually cause an ECAM. Um, but if one BMC is unserviceable or is, is faulty, the other BMC will take over most of the monitoring functions of the other BMC, but you now only have one loop. So, of course, if that loop does sense a fault, it can't obviously get the source from the other one now because it's it, the BMC's failed. Uh, and so that will then give you the warning. So under normal circumstances, loop A and loop B will be required in order to get a fault. Uh, but if one BMC has failed, then, um, yeah, uh, you're going to get a warning then. Uh, or, or an ECAM caution, I should say. Uh, good. Get rid of that pen. Uh, a red pen. I'm on, 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 I'm on reserves now, so let's see if these work or not. Um, so they're the services. Aircon, engine start, wing anti-ice, water pressurization, hydraulic pressurization, fuel inert system. Uh, there are sources. It's managed by the BMCs one and two, loop A and loop B. It manages temperature, um, uh, bleed pressure, uh, bleed source, uh, which is H HP and LP, and it also has uh, leak detection. So quite a, a nifty uh, bit of kit. So where does it all, where does it all come from? It's my bag, get that out of the way. Where does it all come from? I'm running a little bit out of space here. Uh, so let's just draw a red line underneath here for the sources. So you've got engine bleed. That is, a, that is the worst drawing of an engine I think I've ever done. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, let's have a look. Our, uh, a better pen. Uh, I'm, I'm not making any better, am I? Okay, that's an engine, folks. Okay, um, so you've got engine bleed. I've touched on that already with uh, IP and uh, HP air. Uh, then we also have our APU. I'm, I'm going to write APU because I can't draw an engine. Okay, uh, and then we also have a ground cart. Ground source. Okay, and the cross bleed I mentioned earlier on uh, sits sort of to the left hand side here of the APU. I'll talk to you more about that um, uh, in a moment. And I'll, if I haven't done so already, I'll bring up that uh, system schematic up on the, uh, in the picture somewhere up here, perhaps. Or I might take up the full screen and just sort of do some, um, um, make some notes uh, around the outside of it for you. But essentially you can, you can see uh, what it really means there. There's not really much else to sort of talk to you about that. Um, so, so, so if you like, that is the sort of the mechanics of, mechanics of the system. We have a means of uh, moving air between the two around the aircraft with a cross bleed. Normally what happens is BMC1 will look after the left-hand side of the aircraft, the left-hand bleed source, uh, left-hand wing, left-hand uh, wing anti-icing. BMC2 will look after the right-hand side of the aircraft. Normally the cross bleed will stay in the closed position. Um, it's got two motors, a manual and, a, and a, an automatic motor. I'll come onto that more a little bit later. Um, most of the time it stays closed. BMC1 and BMC2 are talking to each other. Two loops in there to detect any fault. Happy days. Uh, the system's uh, working um, as, uh, as, it, uh, as it should. Okay, I'm going to take that off the board now. Hopefully you've got enough from it. Um, what, what I'd suggest you do 
um, it depends how your mind works with this. You might be able to look at the FCOM and just go take a snapshot in your mind, your photographic memory, you remember it. But if you haven't, like normal people, um, then just draw it up. Um, and, and this will cover you for a large part of your knowledge, to be honest with you, particularly in this system. We can talk about like normal in a minute, but when we talk about how the BMCs work, bleed sources, uh, demand, and uh, failure management when we're looking at the, the various feathers that you might get uh, with regards to the BMCs, then if you've drawn this in your mind or you can redraw it again, um, it just helps consolidate that knowledge. OK, so maybe put something like this together and uh, that should help you. Anyway, I'm going to stop it now, rub it out and we're going to have a look at some uh, um, the next part of this, which is uh, components and then system operation. Okay, as if by magic, and we have some light. So hopefully that's a little bit better, but I'm not drawing now, I'm just talking. So this makes it a little bit easier. Uh, right, so bleed valves, um, temperature regulation, we covered that a little bit in pressurization, if you haven't watched that already, in terms of the pre-cooler. Um, APU bleed, uh, we have a, uh, a look at that and how that affects the system and how that reconfigures the system. Um, cross bleed, the two things are slightly connected, and uh, leak detection, which, um, which I touched on uh, earlier on. And after this, we'll have a look at the abnormal uh, configuration. Okay, so the bleed valves I mentioned uh, earlier on, we said that air is normally taken from the intermediate uh, tap off from the, uh, from the bleed. I keep getting notifications up here, which is quite irritating. Um, so usually taken from the IP, for reasons of uh, fuel efficiency, and then it's tapped off the high pressure uh, stage of the compressor uh, when the demand um, is higher. Again, um, this is purely and simply for, for fuel efficiency. Uh, as a note here that if the APU bleed is selected, so the APU is running now, you select the APU bleed on, um, then the engine bleed valves automatically close because the bleed, the APU bleed um, has uh, priority. And if the cross feed is in the auto position, then the, then the cross bleed, cross feed, be really careful here, the cross bleed uh, valve automatically opens. Remember, it's got two motors, one for manual, one for auto. If it's in the uh, auto uh, position, then when you select the, the bleed on, then uh, it opens. You'll see this when you come to do a normal engine start with the APU bleed. As soon as you put the bleed on, have a look at the bleed page and you'll see that the cross bleed uh, valve automatically opens to connect uh, both sides of the um, uh, pneumatic system. Um, the bleed system, like I said, and the bleed valves are controlled automatically by the BMCs and they are pressure and temperature protected as well. So if there is a fault, these valves are going to close. Um, so shut in the case of um, if you press uh, the engine bleed uh, press button. So if you want to turn it off, obviously the valves are going to close. Um, also, if you fired the fire push button, uh, as well as many other ancillary items uh, on the engine gearbox, etc., um, one of the things it will do is close the um, um, bleed valves, engine bleed valves, um, and or if the system then uh, detects a fault. So if your BMC is working um, and it detects a leak um, or a high temperature, uh, you get a fault light in the overhead panel. I'm going a little bit on here to um, abnormals, uh, but what it will do is it will shut those bleed uh, valves off. If the BMC isn't working, there's limited to protection there and it, and it won't automatically turn them off. So that, that's just something for a little bit later on. Um, take temperature uh, regulation. We covered that a little bit in pressurization um, just over the uh, over the engine of fairing where it connects um, to the uh, wing route. Um, just in that fairing area here, I'll, I'll try and put a picture in if I remember um, from pressurization there's um, uh, cooling um, goes on there. It's taken from uh, fan, bleed air, 
there's a valve there which is controlled by the BMCs. It goes to, into this sort of pre-cooler. That's what's, that's the word I'm looking for. That that uh, 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 hot engine air goes through a pre-cooler. That valve is controlled by the uh, pneumatic system and the BMCs as in order to regulate that temperature within a usable limit. Um, that pre-cooled air is somewhere around 200 or 160 degrees, depending on the stage of flight. As you know, in my videos, I don't go over temperatures and pressures specifically because I don't think it's that important. It'll tell you what it's doing and it'll bring up an ECAN if it's not right. Um, if you want to know more, then go into it. But there are two temperature regimes there, depending on the stage of flight. So they can manage it a little bit better. Um, take a breath, Cameron. Uh, APU bleed. Um, this is just a simple compressor um and we select that off on the overhead panel when we put the bleed on um so like i say when you select it, it opens the cross bleed automatically again it has protection uh, apu leak uh, pylon or uh, wing leaks the thing to remember from the apu bleed just in the uh, schematic i showed you earlier on I'll, I'll try and bring it up again just to remind us is that the APU um, ducting and APU bleed is only monitored by BMC1 and it only has a single loop uh, protection, loop A, because uh, it's on BMC1. So if you only need that thing to kick off and then uh, you've lost your APU bleed. Okay, that's just the way it is. Um, cross bleed, I don't know why I've mentioned this about eight times, uh, but it's here again. There are two motors. You know it by now. OK, leak uh, detection. Um, hot air leak is monitored and managed by the bleed management computers. I uh, touched on that earlier on. Um, BMC1 is loop A. BMC2 is loop B. Um, not too sure why I'm struggling with that. Um, they basically talk to each other. I've got a great diagram here which comes out of the uh, FCOM and it shows you the loop configurations on the uh, on the aircraft it shows you the source it shows you the wing um uh, ducting it shows you the apu ducting and the engine uh, bleed sources really really quite a nice diagram this um and you can see here that the pylon the left hand wing and the right hand wing both have double loop and the apu's just got the single loop there so bmc's one and two talking to each other and um, to provide dual loop in the most cases uh, protection on those on those systems. So if the BMC detects a leak, it causes the bleed valve uh, to close. The cross bleed also closes again. This is an automatic mode uh, to isolate the leak. And I guess that makes sense really. That's really what you want the BMCs to do. Um, if it detects a leak, shut the shut the source off, close the cross feed, and that way then if if it's a problem from the left hand side, then the, the cross feed is, I think I said cross bleed again, didn't I? The cross feed is closed and that completely isolates the system. Um, so I've got a note here. Um, only BMC1 monitors the APU bleed. Uh, the OK, so the MEL requires the APU bleed uh, in op and engine number one bleed in op. And there may be flight limitations associated with that and avoiding icing conditions. So I'm um, going on a little bit here. If you get a BMC fault in flight, it's just crew awareness from memory. Um, but if, but obviously on the ground, you need to get an engineer out to have a look at it. And there are MEL and maintenance and operational cons considerations associated with that. A BMC fault, which requires the APU bleed to be isolated and the bleed on that side of the aircraft to be isolated um, and avoiding icing conditions is um, I'm not saying a no go, but it's, it's definitely going to focus the mind. That's for sure. Um, so, so yeah, just, just something uh, to think about. And, and whenever you do isolate one side of the aircraft, then again, you've got to think about uh, icing conditions. And uh, if you happen to turn bleed sources off in flight because of over temperatures, uh, or the system does it automatically, then you've got to think about icing conditions again, because we can't have uh, asymmetric uh, anti-icing, uh, wing anti-icing on the aircraft. 
and you'll need to think about um, configuration and speed increments on VLS, which, are, which from memory is uh, VLS plus 10. So there are some things to think about there when these things start to fail. Um, if the BMC fails, the other will monitor. Um, it'll monitor leak and over pressure, but not over temperature. I think that's lost. Um, the bleed won't close automatically. So I think I touched on that earlier on. So um, if the bleed, if the BMC is working, it'll close the bleed. If the BMC's failed, you still get over pressure and leak monitoring. Um, but if if you get uh, an over temperature uh, or, or a, a, a leak, it's not going to um, shut that down automatically. So if you had a, a normal ECAM because of a leak or an over temperature and you get a fault light, then the BMC is going to close it down automatically. If the BMC fails, you still have some protection on that side. Not all of it, but most of it. But you will be required to turn those um, bleed sources off yourself. And you can see that oh, etch a sketch is so heavy today. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so you need to do that uh, yourself. Um, okay, so oh, leak detection, cross bleed, uh, APU bleed, uh, temperature regulation and bleed valves. I think we've pretty much covered. Um, I'll, I'll leave this on now. And I, think, I think I'm going to go straight onto this because we're on a bit of a roll here at the moment. Uh, I am going to change arms though. Um, so just to have a look at our interaction with the system. Is this still recording? Yeah. Uh, overhead panel. I'll bring up a picture of the overhead panel here for you straight out of the FCOM. Pretty straightforward stuff, really, to be honest with you. Um, when it talks about the BTS, that's the bleed uh, temperature sensors. These are sensors all around the aircraft because if any hot air is escaping out of this ducting, uh, you sprung a leak somewhere, then it, it, these sensors are going to kick off, uh, send a message to the BMC, and the BMC is going to shut it all down. Um, so with reference to the fault light, um, if the so the fault light comes on, if there's obviously a problem, the BMC sensors, there's a problem for whichever, whichever, whichever way it does and whichever system um, it's uh, it's monitored and that has, has failed or is faulty, uh, the fault light will come on. Um, but if it's an over temperature or an over pressure, the fault light will then go out. Uh, so the system might be recoverable. That's just something to think about. Um, as I say, all these conditions are managed by the BMC. The cross bleed, um, you can see there on the overhead panel uh, in auto. Um, auto open shut cases may be caused when required to shut it. So I, I don't know what I've written there or why I've written it. Cross bleed auto open shut cases may be caused when needing to shut it. No idea what I've written there. Obviously you've written something. Um, it's scribbled, so I think that was just a sort of mental note for myself. I think we've spoken about the cross bleed quite a bit now, and it's uh, auto uh, opening automatically when the bleed source is selected, when the uh, APU, in normal cases, um, that will open and close automatically in failure cases. I think that's what I'm writing here. But there may be circumstances where you have to shut it uh, manually, and that will most likely be because of a BMC fault. Um, so normal operation now, um, not much to say here. We um, wouldn't necessarily need to turn off the bleeds. The BMCs one and two will monitor uh, the bleed supply and demand and alternating between IP and HP uh, bleed. Uh, it's pre-called, as we know, and it's sent to the various services to the right hand, left hand side of the aircraft uh, via the ducting. Uh, its pressure and temperature is monitored with leak detection uh, on a two loop system and um, crew alerting via the ECAM. Um, pretty straightforward stuff, really. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much covered the, the normal system. Um, I've made some more notes here about specific failures. I know we've covered it sort of generally, but BMC failure is just essentially crew awareness. 
Um, like I said, it's, it's really is more than that. Um, but if you get in the eCam, then the other system is going to be taking over. There's a little bit of redundancy built in there, which is why I think Airbus just calls it um, um, crew awareness. Obviously, you need the uh, ginger beers out when you get on the ground uh, to come out and have a look. And there's a maintenance item associated with that. So it's not something you can defer yourself. Um, as the other will look after most of the functions, now it's a single loop. Um, so any single loop failure now will give you an ECAM. Bleed leaks require bleed surfaces to be turned off and the cross bleed to be shut and also to avoid icing conditions. Um, guys, we see that quite a lot when we have to press a fire switch, don't we? Um, so when we push a fire switch, we isolate that side of the aircraft, the engine, the bleed and the ducting. Um, and because we've pressed the fire switch, when you come down to the ECAM, it will say avoid icing conditions for exactly the same reason. The cross bleed will remain shut and we can't use the other side bleed to put anti-icing onto that side of the aircraft. So to avoid uh, any asymmetric, um, we avoid icing conditions. It's as simple as that. So you'll have, you'll have seen that before. Um, okay, low temperature. If you get a low temperature warning, um, from the from the bleed, uh, this has just decided to cause me a throw me a curveball. Um, so low temperature. If you get a low temperature uh, bleed, low temperature, the ecam is going to ask you to increase thrust um, in order to get some more hot bleed air into the system. If it's high temperature, uh, then ultimately the pack uh, or the wing anti ice has got to come off depending on which is on at the time uh, in order to reduce the demand so that kind of makes sense really um yeah so a note here uh, remember that bleed leaks cause inot bleed on that side a voice sizing conditions uh, and the procedure obviously is vls plus 10 i think we've uh, we've covered that so yeah there's not much can go wrong with it really bmc failure uh bleed leaks uh is going to ultimately if the bmc is working it's going to shut off that side of void icing conditions um you may or may not have to turn the bleeds off yourself depending on uh whether the bmc is operating on that side and you may get low temperature or high temperature it's going to require you to turn off some services or um give it the berries uh, in order to uh, assist with uh, getting some uh, some more bleed air into the system guys i think that pretty much covers it a relatively short video this um it's uh, it's a little bit off the cuff kind of thing sort of as i'm going along obviously i've done prep for it uh but a little bit of drawing on the board some systems overview it's not an overly complicated system which is kind of why i've done it this way so um, anyway I uh, hope you got something from it. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for your continued support. I hope you're getting something out of these videos, particularly as we're not flying or getting in the sim very much at the moment, and it's keeping you connected with the aircraft. Um, as always, uh, if you liked it, uh, tell the management. If you didn't like it, tell me. Either way, uh, stay tuned. Uh, some more uh, videos uh, to come. Thanks a lot.